All right, let's do this question. Gray code. You want to make a sequence of two to the power of n integers, where n is the input given into your function, and every integer has to be within the range zero to two to the power of n minus one. If the first integer is zero, every integer is unique in the sequence, and every adjacent integer differs by exactly one bit. First and last integers also have to differ by one bit. So how do we how do we do this? Well, let's take um, let's take an example. We have n is equal to two. That means we have we have two to the power of two numbers, which is four. Every number has to be in the range zero to two to the power of n minus one. So it has to be one of these numbers, but in some order such that these two conditions are met. Okay. Well, what are these in binary? We have zero 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 one. 1, 2, and 1, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, they differ by 1 bit, so that's fine. These differ by 2 bits, so that's not good. And the first and last differ by 2 bits as well. So we have to kind of reorder this such that these two conditions are true. I was only able to figure out why a certain pattern worked after I I like tried out a certain pattern. So I get, yeah, it is. I guess that's why I have so many dislikes. It's always good to, in these kind of situations, to start with um, the simplest case possible. So if n is equal to 1, we have 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. So in that case, we could just do 1, 0, 1. So that will be a sequence. You know that's the answer. What if we, to take this and just reverse it, so we have 1, 0, so we have this sequence here. And what do we notice about this is that, uh, oh, this is valid. We have 0, 1, so they differ by 1 bit. This is valid. This is not valid. Oh, actually, yeah, this is not valid because they differ by zero bits. The first and last are not valid because they differ by zero bits. So what if we just prepend a zero to the first two? So these still differ by a one bit and add a one to the second half. So these still differ by one bit. But now, because this the first bit transitions from zero to one here, now these no longer differ by zero bits, they differ by one bit and same as the first and last one. So here, now we have a new sequence, and this new sequence is four, has has, has four numbers in it, so that's for um, n is equal to two. So this will be the answer for n is equal to two. Now we just continue the pattern for n equal to three. Why can we just like repeat this, uh, what we just did? Well, let's see. If I take this sequence, copy it, and just, you know, reverse it, so you have one, zero, one one zero one zero zero. Look what happens here. Well, obviously these two, the sequence from here to here differ one by one bit because we've ensured that in the previous sequence, same as this half here. But this, the two middle ones differ by zero bits and the ends differ by zero bits as well. So if you just add a zero bit to the first half and a one to the second half, then that would fix that issue. And it's neat in that this is actually um, eight numbers, which is two to the power of three. And we just continue that pattern. And that's pretty much it. All right, so that's pretty simple. Let's, let's try to implement that. So we have a base case, which is a vector of ints. Let's call it the answer, zero, one. And let's go through, uh, starting from one, int i uh, equal to one, i less than n, plus plus i. We can create a copy of the answer. Let's call it temp. It's the answer. We can reverse it. So reverse temporary.begin temporary.end and we're going to make sure to, to prepare a 1 to all of these numbers while going through each value. Make sure it's a reference to each value in temp and say v plus equals to uh, a one bit shifted i times. So for example, if n is equal to two, then we'll be going through the number zero one and we'll be adding a one bit shifted one time. So essentially if we have a zero one here, let's just pad a zero at the start. We'll be adding a one zero here and a one zero here to get a total of one zero and one one. Then we can uh, push back to the answer or insert to the answers end the temporary.begin and temporary.end then return the answer 
So that's one. Let's try the two. And 16 is the max. All right, yeah, that works. Awesome, so yeah, that works. Let's see if we can make it faster, actually. Get the size of how large the current answer is. So we get the size and then maybe we could uh, go through st starting from s minus one all the way to j greater than zero uh, minus minus j and do our yeah, answer to push back answer at j let's store the offset one bit shifted i times plus the offset and then that should pretty much do the same thing and hopefully oh uh, should be greater than or equal to zero so let's try 16 cool cool all right let's see if that uh, improves this speed a little bit uh, a little bit okay so i'm not i'm not i'm not sell settling for the speed here let's let's see what happens if it do um answer the re reserve so that's the reserve sum amount here what do you reckon so i need one bit shifted n times that's how many num numbers i need the answer dot pushback zero answer pushback one All right, let's see if that's any faster oh yeah a little better hmm i don't think it can get any faster than this because let's uh, let's see what the time complexity is how many time how many iterations will this be run will this be would pushback be called it will be it will be called exactly uh, 2 to the power of n times so this is linear in 2 to the power of n and it sh so it shouldn't be any faster than this because um, no way you can like avoid pushing back 2 to the power of n uh, numbers to the array and so yeah this is the optimal time complexity thanks for watching like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video